All right. What's up, world? Don't notice my hair. Looks a little crazy. Multi months in quarantine. Um, where's our locations? Cairo, Istanbul, Saudi Arabia, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Toronto, Vietnam, Brazil. How many people are in the U.S. here? What state are we in? I got Transylvania, Romania, Maryland, India, Michigan, Ohio, New Zealand, Minnesota, Norway, London, India, Texas, Arizona, India, Kenya, Portugal, Miami. Uh, what else we got here? Why is this showing? Edmonton, Florida, Denmark. Dubai, Argentina, Mezzi, Ghana, New York City. New York going to be under lockdown for a while, man. Okay, let us begin. Oh, oh yeah, that's it. I got my protein shake here. Today's theme, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to give you three business ideas. Okay. Hey, Jack, really quick, sorry. Uh, can you record this on your phone too for backup? Oh, yeah. Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to need to charge up this phone. Hold on. So I'm on my farm. Got a library behind me. You know it. I got that whole wall and over there. And then I got it in my room too. So uh, I got to see Ben, Mohammed, Tony, Sedino. Valentine, Constance Crumley, Amir, Bernard, Mofaro, Jed, Carol, Brandon, Technospark, EB, Julio, David Hunt, or Julio, Michael, Werner and Marshall, Patricia Taylor, Paul, Elaine, Dan Danilo, Photo, Richo, Asal, Stefan, Marcus, Benjamin, Marcus, two Marcuses. Sarad, OOS Gaming, Michael Bowers, Hassan. We got every ethnicity on this thing. Got every nationality, every ethnicity. Well, that's good. Going to get a wide variety. We'll take this from a wide variety. Um, well, I'm waiting for my phone to start. Let's see. 617 people. I want to make sure everybody's on. Okay. Somebody's in Latvia. I've been there. I haven't been to Latvia. I've been to Lithuania. And I've been to Estonia. Where's Zach? No, Zach, Zach is in um he's in North Carolina or Texas with his family. Nevis Islands. Okay. What about Canada? I actually have been working since last year on opening an office in Canada in Toronto. So, and I have a group that works for me from Montreal too. So I'm moving more, a lot of my businesses overseas. Okay, get my phone's rebooting. So we are going to talk about many things. I'm going to go over some websites. I'm going to go a little shorter than normal just because I want to go do some other stuff. So Get what you pay for in life, right? Nobody can complain because you're getting this for free. All right. Recording on. Today's subject is, thanks everybody, the 625 people are on. Thank you. We've got every country in the world, um, it seems like. And what I want to kind of theme today's e-commerce talk, is I want to give you three specific products that if I was starting all over, like what I would start with. Okay. And there's more than three, but I'm going to give you three as an example. And some of you can just take this idea and build your own business. You don't need any help. Some of you are already 
skilled. And we have a program for those of you who are not confident that I'll put a link to later at the end of this call if you want to go through my four-month certification. So you can just do. Some people like to have somebody help them and some people are self, you know, want to only do it on their own. You choose. Okay. So let's think of it this way, by the way, I want to start out by saying this, like I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and there's basically a series of belts, white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, coral belt, and then you get red belt. Very few people. So let me, I'm going to share my screen here because I want you to think about your e-commerce journey here. Kind of like that. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen. Everybody should be able to see this. So we have, we're talking about e-commerce, three specific businesses you could start today. Okay. That's the theme for today's talk. First thing I want to do is just explain my my perspective on the levels of let's call it personal finance everybody's wanting to get into e-com well not everybody but a lot of people part of the reason is you want to make money and you want to re reach some level of financial independence so i just want to you know i similar to brazilian jiu-jitsu Um, you know, level one is white belt. In my, my perspective, that means your net worth is under 50,000 us dollars. Now this is more for Americans, but okay. You can apply it really to any country. And then you have blue belt and your net worth is, oh, and this is just approximate. Okay. To 99,000. Okay. The reason I do that, the average person in America, their net worth is under $50,000. Okay. The cash that they have on hand, the, the value of any real estate they might own, things like this. If you add it all together, the average person is, has less than $50,000 in America. So that's kind of the beginner level white belt. That's why I put that at a beginner. Blue belt would be fifty to hundred thousand. Purple belt net worth is if you don't want net worth is what it is, you should Google it. Important you know. Coral belt here. Yeah. So your brown belt is net worth is 10 million to one to 10 million. And I'm just, like I said, <clears throat> oops, sorry, not coral belt, black belt. I meant black belt. Your net worth is 10 million to 100 million. And then you have two other belts, not as important. Most people don't. Coral belt. Net worth is a hundred million to one billion, or we could do to nine hundred and ninety-nine million. And then finally, number seven, you have some people are red belts, very few in the world. Net worth puts them on the Forbes list. Um, over. 1 billion net worth. Okay. So it's just a good way that I just, it's not exactly accurate, obviously, but it, it gives you just kind of a basic understanding of how I'm, my perspective is. Now, I want you to understand, you know, e commerce has made somebody go on the, become a red belt. If we look here at, at, uh, Stop sharing for a second. Let me pull something up here. So just 
Now, I want you to know that I, I, it's not possible for everybody in the world to become a billionaire or even a millionaire. So you can't have that as your only goal because it's just not realistic that it, it's not going to happen. Okay. Not everybody, at least not in our lifetime. Let me share my screen again. So as I share my screen, you see Jeff Bezos here. Number one, he's on the Forbes list. Of course, he's a red belt. So is Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. These three out of four did it with e-commerce. Okay, Something you should know. Right now, red belts in the world, three out of top four wealthiest billionaires did it with e-commerce. So you should know that obviously your goals should not be that you become the richest person in the world. That's not a realistic goal, but it has worked. It is the cutting edge thing and not enough people know how to do it. So I'll leave it that simple. Okay. Three out of the top four wealthiest billionaires became red belts with e-com. Now, real quick show of hands here. Um, who do we have here? What belt are you? What belt are you? Financial belt. Let's see. Somebody said you fall under Nova. There's the lowest is white belt. Okay. Everybody's, if you don't know what you are, you're a white. Do we have any blue belts? I see a lot of whites here. White, white, white. And remember, this is imaginary. You don't really have a belt. Okay. Blue. We have somebody who's a blue. One person says purple, white, 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 white. iPhone says I only have 3K. That means you'd be a white belt. We got three blue belts. Somebody said a coral belt. I don't believe you. Below white, there is no below white. So if you're if you're a somebody said they were a pur was a purple belt and now they are white. So you could make money and then lose it all. Charles Johnson says he's a blue belt. Who here doesn't know how to calculate your net worth? Because if you don't, you, you, you should go back and get a refund for your school system. There should be a lot of refunds for the modern day school system, high school and college. Purple belt. So it looks like the highest, a few people, there's a few blue belts. Purple belt is net worth $1 million to uh, tech three says my, I'm a purple belt. I'm asset rich, but cash poor. Okay. You need to apply what's called a, uh, closely held business liquid liquidity discount. What if you're in due in debt? Well, the way net worth works, you take your assets, you subtract your liabilities and the number that's there is your, your equity, your net worth. Financially, by the way, this does not mean you're, you're worth as a human being. Okay. I'm just talking about in the financial independence game. Where are you? Is white less than 50 grand? Jason asked. Yes. Okay. People ask what belt am I? Well, I'm a black belt. I, I'm a black belt. Depends. Depends if I want to be. Net worth is a little hard to calculate at some point. So depends who you ask. Um, 1 million to 10 million would be a purple belt. What's the average person's median net worth is like I said, white belt or below. Okay. So yeah, you're going to be learning those of you who are in my program. Um, you know, everybody teaching in there is either a black belt. We have one brown belt that teaches in my e-commerce program. My new one, most everybody's a black belt or a coral belt. Okay. I'll show this one more time. If, if you're wondering, here you go. Okay. So purple is a hundred grand. Sorry. Purple is a hundred to a million. My bad. Okay. Brown is one to 10 million. Black belt. These are kind of made up imaginary numbers too. So don't get too stuck on it. What you need to understand is that there's levels to this game, kind of like rappers say, there's levels to it. And it's important to know where you are. 
and you got to be honest with where you are. Okay. It's kind of like before you go lift weights, you should measure your bicep. You should measure your wrist. You should measure your forearms. You should measure your shoulders, your chest, your waist, your thighs, your hips, your calves. You know, that's that's the standard measurement. Even your neck too, because then you know where you're starting from, and that's the expectation. So, for you guys, I want you to really know where you are, and you should try to at least get a blue belt. And after you get a blue belt, you could try for a purple belt. Not everybody's going to get above a purple belt. Okay. Sebastian says, can I start a business with less than hundred grand? For sure. I started my first business with no money. Okay. Okay. Let's, I want to jump in now with three e-commerce business models that you can start with. Some of you can start today or some of you, this will give you an idea to do something else. Now, how do I come up with this? These three. So what we have is, um, I'm going to do a case study. Number one. Okay. Here's number one case study for you to do. Okay. And that is, um, what a, uh, I'm going to actually show you how you're going to come up with the product. So there's two things I look for. Okay. Two things I look for. I'm going to write it out here. Let me put a little slide before I do this. What I look for, what do I look for? The two secrets. I'm going to give them to you. Number one, I want things that have um, addictive and large TAM. Okay? And you guys, oh, did I forget to share my screen? Sorry. Here you go. Okay. So these are the two things. When I'm looking at products, I'm looking at addictive products. Okay. And let me just say ethically addicted. Okay. Ethically. So not, look, my dad went to prison for a long time for selling drugs. He made a lot of money, but he ended up in prison and he, you know, my dad just died last month. He didn't have it. He, I took care of him for the last 10 years of his life because he had zero dollars. So you want to sell addictive stuff, but ethically, because they clamp down. My dad told me, never, you don't want to go to prison. He's like, it's boring. My dad got big in prison. He was a pro, he was a pro bodybuilder before he went to prison. He came out like his biggest ever. My dad was strong. He used to rep like he could rep 350, 360 bench press. Then he wasn't a huge guy. But besides that, he said, prison's boring. So we want to find addictive, ethical things, <laughs> just to be clear, because I know somebody's going to take this the wrong damn way, okay? So um, large TAM, okay? What do I mean by TAM? Does anybody know what TAM is? Who knows what TAM stands for? Anybody? Come on. I need some... Blue belt levels, guys. Target audience market. Getting warmer. Ty, is Dan Penna a mentor of yours? You know, I never met Dan Penna. I've heard about him, um, but I don't know much about him. Total available market. Close. Okay. Somebody got it here. Tar total addressable market. So just imagine. Let's take number one first. Let's, I'm going to take this here and I'm going to apply it to the next slide. Wait, how did this pop in here? Oh, this is supposed to be up higher here. Okay. So, okay, so, so I'm going to fill this out. Okay. What, what's something addictive that's ethically addictive? Let's just brainstorm together and then we'll, we'll talk about the TAM. Who has something that humans now i'm gonna tell you this remember we're dealing with homo sapiens here it's not that hard to think through it people like to think they're all unique snowflakes they're not homo sapiens have very common needs man in every country give me something that homo sapiens need that they're addicted to remember it doesn't have to be addiction like drugs 
It could be any level of addiction. It can be like, for example, I'm addicted to oxygen. Okay. One day they'll probably be selling damn oxygen somewhere. I'm addicted to oxygen. Are you? Yeah, you are. Because if I take it away from you, it's all you're going to think about. That's the definition of addiction. Makeup. Makeup. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you. Who said that? You win the prize of me reading off your name. Now, there's many things. Somebody said meth, but that's not legal. So, okay. So you end up in prison. Then you get all the government takes all your money away. So we're going to have one. Makeup. Now, we know not all him. I'm not addicted to makeup. I never put makeup on. Well, I did. I was in a movie, one movie, one major movie I've been in my life called Pop Star with Andy Samberg. And they put makeup on me. They put fake tattoos and some other stuff. I forget what it was. It was kind of cool. I was in the makeup trailer with me and Sarah Silverman. If you know who she is, she's in the movie. Snoop Dogg's in the movie. Um, but I'm not addicted to makeup. So is the total addressable market the entire planet of makeup? No. But is it a large addressable market? Primarily women wear makeup. There are men who wear makeup. But primarily women. So we got about half planet Earth. That's 3.5 billion. But some women are babies and some women are... My grandma's 102. She doesn't wear makeup anymore. How big do you guess the makeup addressable? market is what's our guess what's our guess here 150 billion well there's only there's only 8 billion people in the world 3 billion so think of it this way 3.5 billion women let's say 30 percent of them really like makeup that's one approximately let's just use round numbers Let's just say that's 1 billion humans. Sounds big to me. Now, we got to go to number three. We got to go, okay, what do I do in makeup? It's wide. It's too wide. I'm confused. So then we have to come out with a focused product launch. Okay? I call this an FPL. Okay? We got to have a focused product launch does that make sense because you can't just go makeup there's too much makeup in the world there's thousands millions of products so now we how do we figure out what we should do for our fpl simple google research i use google to research i'm gonna do it right now we're gonna do it as right now together i'm just gonna put up in the word makeup see what comes up the most basic thing ever. I'm going to go, and I like to go to Google Shopping right here. What the heck shows up on Google Shopping? Well, Ultra Beauty. I guarantee you, it's not even a huge brand. AliExpress is selling a makeup kit right there. That's something you can drop ship. Let's look at this. A simple product. It's ranking here. I like to look at Google because it somewhat gives you an idea of ranking. You can also look at Amazon. There's various ways. You can do more complex research than this, but here's AliExpress, all right, which is, if you guys know, related to the Chinese company. Pretty good little website here. They're selling it for how much? 12 bucks. So it's a, it's a kit. A makeup kit. Okay. That makes sense to me. So I'm going to go back here. My research shows me a makeup kit. Now the next thing, the four Ps. What's number two P is second P is pricing. What price range are we going to be in? Again, I'm using, I would just use the same thing. Pop feel is $1,260 to $2,450. So I'm just going to say, if I want to copy that, I'm going to go sub $25 as my core product. You can have other products you're selling. A $25 core product in the makeup space, potential market $1 billion, easy to do a FPL, my focus product launch, because I can just do some simple research. Okay, now the next step is I need to find the, the fourth P, 
Uh, fourth P stands for placement delivery. So I have to be able to, how do I get this product? Now there's a few options. You can actually buy it basically from this company right here. This Chinese company can ship for you. So if you guys uh, type in drop shipping, okay, what comes up, you will see, um, not even sure what that is. So this is like a, looks like it's a plugin or something. Interesting. I haven't seen this, but um, it's a new website. Look, okay. I don't do that much drop shipping. This is good for more for beginners. Don't, you don't have to use this website, but basically you're going to buy products. There's over a hundred million available. Okay. And they'll ship it to your customer for you. There's different vendors that will do this. So you can start out with drop shipping. If you can get the supplier else, you can also do a 3PL or you can ship yourself. One other big option is Amazon can ship for you. Okay. So we got our, we got a lot covered right here. We got a lot covered. Now, the most important thing, number seven is, it's the third P in the four P's is promotions. How, how in the world do we get customers? This is the important part. And the first answer is viral videos, social media influencers, affiliates, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, Snapchat ads, Twitter ads. Now, TikTok is getting in the game of ads. And let's not forget email list, SMS list that you build on your own, third-party solo ads or drops, email SMS drops where other people will email their list on your behalf. So I just gave you here a good order. Can we create a viral video? Can we find social media influencers? What do you think? Is there anyone in the makeup space? So let's just look. YouTube makeup influencer sells business. Has anybody ever made money as a social media influencer? Let's just look here. Um, this is the girl that sold her company for $100 million. Here you go. Michelle Fan. She was selling makeup. YouTube beauty star. And um, she sold her company, I believe, for $100 million. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then it, she disappeared. She's probably having fun with all her money she made. I forget how much. There you go. Ipsy. Uh, somewhere it was, she got paid, I believe, $100 million. So she did well. Let me put it that way. And her business wasn't even that big. I don't even think she was doing that much sales. So, but somebody bought her. So you can see that social media influence is large, viral videos. She did viral videos. I'm not sure if she had affiliates. I don't think she did any of the rest of this. She just did the first two. All right. Questions on case study one. When you buy email lists, you don't buy the list. You buy somebody else on your behalf will email. You. It's called solo ads, email drops. Yes, Jeffrey Starr is another person. Kylie Jenner became the youngest self-made billionaire in history. Alter makeup. Don't think that they control the market. It's a very boutique market. So Huda Beauty. What about CBD? Yeah, you can do CBD-infused cosmetics. Lots of people are doing that. Is Premiere Pro good for making Facebook ads? Uh, yeah, but you don't even need that level. Hemp, good bit. How much is attributed to luck 
what are the odds you and I are on planet Earth right now alive? There's always luck to life. The odds of our us being alive is you know, insanity numbers. Um. Is it safe safe to drop ship makeup from China? Sure. You know? I don't think China's putting out radioactive makeup. And it's not all necessarily from China. They drop ship from different places. Any questions on number one? What age did I start? Not, uh, 19. Do, did I sell art? Well, any questions on case study one? Somebody's asking on Facebook ad strategies. Eric says he has no question. What app do you recommend for making Facebook ads? I just, well, we I have video editors, but I've made ads just on my phone. iPhone is your best way with no editing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Are Facebook ads really worth it? Only if you have a good product and they are and you have good marketing. Phone cases, are they big Pam? Who thinks thumbs up or thumbs down to phone cases? Is that an addictive market? Do people really have to have it? Okay, I'm seeing thumbs down, lots of thumbs down. Yeah, you can't, let me be clear. It's not the worst idea in the world. It's not the worst idea. But it's not the best idea either. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. Not, this makeup idea is way better. People can live without a phone case every single day. Hundreds of millions of women. First thing they do when they wake up before they go outside is put on makeup. A lot of women would rather walk outside naked than no, than no makeup on. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. we looks like we got a thumbs down on the phone case. As I said, on a one to 10 ranking, I'm going to give the phone case idea a five. It's not horrible and it's not great. What about face masks? So now you're getting back into cosmetics. I'm giving that a much higher ranking because women and men too, but women specifically are very addicted to keeping their skin looking young. Men, not, you know, men. 50-50. But you meet very few women that are like, you know what, I want my skin to look old. Gnarled. No. Okay. Let's go. Do you guys want me to do another case study or move on? I can do three. Up to three. Okay. Bernard said yes. That's all yes. Dunstan says yes. One more. Okay. By the way, I'm training you guys right here be able to do this without me to be able to and by the way if you get this right if you pick the right product you're so much better than the average business owner i mean the average peep entrepreneur starts the stupidest damn ideas you've ever ever heard it's just wild let me show you what i mean let me share my screen i'm gonna just what's a stupid business idea i bet you somebody's selling it let's just what's something that's like let's just think here for a second what do we got? What's just something dumb? Let's say dog crap shopping. Okay. Let me go to Google Shopping. Well, that's not what I was looking at for. This is actually a good idea. Here we go. The only problem, it looks pretty saturated, but I don't know. This isn't what I was looking for. I was trying to see if anybody's literal. Here. Oh, no. There. Here is a bag. Look at this. Here is somebody selling dog poop wildflower seeds. Okay. This idea, probably not my favorite idea. Okay. <laughs> I don't, this is an Etsy thing. Fake dog poop. All right. I told you. Somebody, look at all the entrepreneurs. I think this is a good idea. One, two, three, four. To me, no one's addicted to buying your product. It's a one-time sale. You have no repeat buyers. But look at all these entrepreneurs out here being like, oh, I'm going to become a black belt 
in finance is by selling dog poop. All right. If for, by the way, if any of you, I'm going to put a link up. By the way, I have a four month certification, ecom uh, certified specialist. You get a certificate at the end of the four year, uh, four months. You got to go through an exam. It's very comprehensive. If any of you starts in this dog poop business, I'm going to take your certificate away. Okay. Not that you can't make a quick buck, but there's no long term here. Now, maybe if you launch a prank website that has hundreds of pranks, and this is one of them, maybe I'll let you keep your ECS certificate, Ecom Certified Specialist. Okay. Cow pie clocks. Let's see what that is. There's a guy who became a millionaire selling pet rocks. Here you go. Cow pie clocks. Good God. Here's one right here. I don't know what it is. I'm scared to look. Cow manure clock. Okay. That is a bad idea. All right. Cow dung as fertilizer for farms. That's a little better. <laughs> idea. Look at all the dumb ideas. It's insane how many people. Okay, someone said, what about swimwear? Okay, is swimwear addictive? Yes or no? What do we got? Swimwear, somebody asked. Is swimwear addictive with a large tan? Jay says no. Marcella says no. Marcus says seven out of ten. So fashion is addictive. Men and women. There are people that spend money that they don't have and go into debt because of fashion. But I'm also going to tell you the problem with fashion is specific items are not addictive. So if you become a specialist in bikinis or something, let's, let's just look how big is the bikini market? Um, total swimwear sales. Let's just look. Global market. Uh, okay, so U.S. swimwear sales. This is two years ago. What's our dollar amount? Okay. $3.6 in total sales. Is that good or bad? Oh, I forgot to share my screen. Sorry, guys. Okay, here's you swimwear industry in the United States. Okay. I feel like it might be addictive for guys to look at these pictures, but is the sales addictive? U.S. retail sales of swimwear was $3.6 billion in 2010. Now they're at $4.6 billion in 2018. So the TAM on that, you know, a billion dollar market, okay, but it's not amazing. Like I'll give you an example, like, oh, here's an ad for one of my companies. I own this company that's advertising here. <laughs> well, there you go. Retargeting ads are working. The dress barn, it's a big company I bought. When I bought it, it was doing $740 million a year in sales. So it's a big company. This is called retargeting ads. If you've ever typed in a word, it keeps showing you based on behavior ads. So, um, so I don't know. I'm going to give you, you know, swimwear. Mm. Dress Barn, a company, is very addictive. We have over 10 million customers who have bought stuff from us, and they come back and back and back. So it's a form of addiction. But I don't get as excited about one specific thing in fashion because people are fickle. You know, you have to constantly be, but so fashion as a whole is addictive. Toys are okay. Good. You win the, the prize here. So let's go to case study two. And I'm just going to, I don't, I want to save my time here because case, I got to go a little faster. I don't want to be here all day. Okay. Toys. Okay. Well, are toys addictive to kids, to their market? Hell yeah. When I was little, man, 
I mean, toy kids love toys so much they'll turn a stick into a toy. Part of the our DNA. Is it large Tam? What do you think? Do you think people spend a lot of money on toys? Let's go to our Google research. Let's see how big the TAM is, the total addressable market. Global, now we're at 90 billion. What was swimwear at? Four. Toys are at 90. Which market would you rather be in? A $4 billion market or a 90 billion? Now, this is global, but even in the U.S., it's 27 versus four. It's, it's, you know, seven times bigger. Okay. I'm going back here. Let's just call it a hundred billion a year. That's real money. If I just get a teeny, 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 teeny marketplace in the toy. Now let's do our research. Did anybody ever make money? Did you know about this, guys? A kid. Uh, here's a YouTube kid at five years old. Is Ryan's world. Let me just show you this. This is going to blow your mind. It's a kid with a YouTube channel with his dad. He made $22 million last year. $22 million. Business Insider. Google it. He's now eight years old. This kid, this kid is freaking already a black belt at eight years old. What am I doing? We all suck compared to this kid and his dad. All right. His net worth, he has 22 million subscribers. This kid might be worth easily over a hundred million bucks. <laughs> That means this guy, this, this dude's, you know, a coral belt. Who wishes instead of the school system you went through that showed you how to build a business like this? Who wishes they had learned more ge geometry and less business? Gosh, you got to mute and unmute. Somebody's unmuted. Just think about like, it's annoying, right? While we were memorizing idiotic things, while people are going trying to get a Harvard MBA, this kid out here taking advantage of new trends, addictive markets, right? Large TAM. And by the way, that 22 million, that's like his YouTube revenue, I think. It's just insane. Which means he has no real cost. <laughs> it's like, I don't think he's spending money on marketing. People give him the toys. He's got his own line at Walmart. He might be netting 15 million bucks a year. That's insanity. At eight. At eight. Yes, his parents get it. But, you know, unless his parents are absolute assholes, like Michael Jackson became rich even though his dad made money on it. You can make money. It'll turn into money for the kid when he's 18. They may be putting some of the money in a trust that he gets when he's older. So um, so now we got to go here back to my shared screen. And we got to, we have to go, okay, do our Google research. I did. Uh, this kid doing pretty damn well, people. <laughs> he, all you got to do is found a kid at eight years old making 22 million. That's good research right there. So it tells me that there's demand. There's demand. There's virality. When we're going to talk about a marketing, YouTube's review, reviews. That's what that, that kid does, reviews. And then he sells some products too. I think he... He has a deal with Walmart. So remember, though, if you go back to this slide right here, I told you you have to have an SPL. This is where a lot of you go wrong. Toys is too broad of a damn market. So what's my FPL? What's my focus product launch going to be? I told you how to do it. I'm going here. I'm just typing in toys. That's it. Or buy toys is even better. If you put a verb to it, then Google shows you. 
they call it buyer intent. You're showing you have an intent. What shows here up here at top? Okay, we got magic walking unicorns. Now toys, there's a, in toys there's trendy things, right? A wobble bubble ball. What the heck? All right, I gotta click on a wobble bubble ball. It's six dollars. What the hell is this? Wobble bubble ball. Who has who who's a parent that knows what a wobble bubble ball is? Kind of a good name. I want to keep saying that name. I want to say Wobble Bubble. How the hell can they sell this for $6? It's a pretty good website. I mean, it's a pretty good product. So if I look at my pricing, maybe sell a Wobble Bubble Ball. You can probably get these made or white label them. You know what they're doing wrong? I can show you. They don't have a video. So we could just start out my hypothesis, wobble bubble ball at six bucks. Hey, at six bucks, you get a lot of buyers. And I'm going to use video marketing, which these people don't know how to do. They don't have a video here. Just a video alone showing the parents what it could do will increase your conversion rate. These are also horrible pictures. It looks like this kid is being traumatized by the wall. It looks like he's like, being eaten by the wobble bubble ball. No parent wants their kid to be eaten by the toy. It's not even good marketing. Like you want the kid to be happy. Parents are the ones. This kids don't spend the money. Kid don't have a credit card. So they're showing the wrong ads. You know, and they should talk about the word safety. This is a better picture of father and a son playing together. You know. Weitlangelbig Ausfuhr. They forgot to translate it from German. Okay, if you're selling it in America, don't have it say Weitlangelbig Ausflasbar. I kind of know German, but what? What does that mean? Ice. Maybe they're talking about the colors. Anyway, don't have your your landing page be in German <laughs> for Americans. They know no American, no German. Okay, look, one hundredth of one percent. All right, are you guys learning? Are you guys getting value from this? Are you learning something you didn't know, or did, are all of you already black belts? You already know everything. Like I pro promise you, for I'm giving you for free. Literally, there's not one college in the United States people paying thirty grand to get digital marketing degrees learning any of this. I know because I've been there. I, I've I've been invited to Harvard to speak. I know what they're doing. I've been invited to London Business School, school or was it London Business LBS, which is the number two business school in the world. Harvard's number one. Been to USC. I know what's going on. People wasting their damn money. I'm showing you right here on, on a weirdo Zoom while I do my. By the way, this is a good little exercise thing, but I wouldn't build my first business around it because it's not addictive, and it doesn't have a large TAM. Okay. What else do we have? Someone said, can Ty, can I see case study one? Okay, somebody got here late. Let me real quick review where we're at. Then I'm going to give you the third case study, as I promised. So going back through what we've learned today, e-com, give you three things. I wanted you to understand the level of personal finance, mastery. White belt is your net worth, where you start. All of us start a net worth as a white belt. Some people die a white belt. It's okay. doesn't make you a bad human. It's just the game of life. Some people figure out money and some people don't. It's been that way for 10,000 generations. Some people suck with whatever currency they had. And you got all the way up to red belt. And then we talk about, I don't know why this is on its own slide. Oh, I was saying, look. The most wealth right now in the world or the top of the Forbes list is being created by people who understood e -com. So what do I look for in e -com? Addictive, ethically addictive, large total addressable market. Case study one was makeup. And you can see the screen here. I like it as a large a TAM, a billion people. Let's look up. I forgot to do this. What is total makeup sales? What do you guys think? Is it going to be bigger than toys? Lower? 
did not look at this. This is not right. There you go. Beauty is a $532 billion industry. By the way, do your homework. Google here showed me an incorrect number. What the hell? Are the, I don't even know what this is talking about right here. I think makeup's only $8 billion? Come on, man. So there's different levels. As I told you, this one says beauty is blown up to be a $532 billion industry. That sounds pretty good, right? So we go right here, 1 billion people, and you got 532 billion in sales. So by the way, before I got on this call, you know what I was doing? I was on the phone. We're rolling out our own makeup line for one of my companies. So I'm telling you guys my insider truth. No lie. I was on the phone. I was, I was actually texting. I can't show you this guy's name. I'm going to cover it, but he's one of the big makeup manufacturers. And you can see the very bottom. I don't know if you can mean dark bright in my screen. And bright. You can see the last thing he wrote me. Let me check on inventory. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Anyway, this is on my mind right now. Okay. I have a friend doing 800 million in sales in makeup. And also skin, and not just makeup, but skincare, cosmetics, the overall industry. Okay, let me do one thing. I'm going to put this before I go to number three. I'm going to, so on this call, I'll be on here for about another 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to put a link up. If you want to go through, because you're only going to learn so much in this hour or two, if you're seeing the value, I'm going to put a link to something I rolled out exactly eight days ago. It's my ECS program. It's an online training program, four-month certification. At the end of four months, sorry, I've been out on my farm. If you see the dirt still on my hands, <laughs> under my nails, um, it's not because I'm a dirty person. I was just literally out working on something. On, on We have sheep, so sheep and cattle and farms. So sorry about my hands. Um, the, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I'm going to put this link up. You can go there. You can get in the program. Costs less, way less than a thousand bucks. I like to price a product of this value. I'm never going to sell. I'm not going to sell for less than a hundred bucks and I want to keep it affordable. So I put it, you know, way under a thousand bucks. Some of you won't be able to afford it. That's fine. You can take what you learned here. And you can try to do it on your own. For those of you who you don't feel 100% confident, that's fine. Let me take you through four months. And I'm going to do something. There's different levels to my four-month certification. But I'm going to throw in for free, for those of you who get on now, two weeks in addition to the program. For two weeks, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one text messaging. So while you're building your e-com program, you can just text me. Me and a couple of my marketing guys will answer your text. It won't always be me, but it's people I've trained for many, many years. Okay. But that I'm only going to make that available to people who get on because that offer is only available on this live call. So when I get off here and press leave the zoom meeting, you will not get that. You can still get in the ECS program. But you will not get the bonus. Okay. You will not. And it's not fair because other people pay a thousand dollars to get four months of that free texting so it's not fair if i give it away for free for everybody and i'm only giving away two weeks so it's fair to them so um so let me put the link real quick here what is the link and then i'm going to get to the third thing it's a uh, tylo.com okay. forward slash start okay so let me share my screen and we'll, we'll put it in the chat so people can see there, too. We're going to put a link in the chat. So if you want me to guide you for the next four months, okay, join my ECS program, which stands for e-commerce. Certified specialist. You can use this, by the way. You don't just have to be an entrepreneur. You can use this to get a job. 
everybody's going to be hiring e-com specialists. They already are. I promise you it's already happening. How do I, how can I be so sure? Easy. Because my company, all, all my different companies are always looking and there's hardly anybody who's good at e-com. There's a lot of people who think they're good at e-com, but they're not actually good. So tylopez.com slash start. I'll be reading off the names of a few of you who get in the program while I continue my talk. Um, but you got, I'm going, you have 41 minutes left if you want to get in. Okay. Cause I'm going to, I got to go do something else. Oh, somebody just got in Christian Garcia from Houston, Texas. Welcome to the group. Lucero Magula from Alpharetta. Welcome to the group. Adrian Spahi eyes. Oh, Stockholm. Welcome to the group, man. I love Sweden. Sweden's a damn good country. I'll tell you that. All of Scandinavia I love. Denmark, Sweden. I've never been to Norway. I've never been to Iceland. Or the Faroe Islands. That's one of the Nordic places that people don't know. Anyway, I'll, I'll read off the name of some people who get in. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go here to case study number three. Let's see if I've built some skill with you guys. Like... Have you built any skill over this call? By the way, going back here, if you want to move off, oops, if you want to stop just being a white belt, it's going to come from skill. A lot of people are like, oh, sorry, I'm, going to become a, I'm going to become a blue belt or a purple belt or a brown belt. I've never seen a lucky. I personally have. I'm sure it's happened. I'm just saying I've never met somebody who was an accidental brown or black belt and let unless they inherited their money at birth or something everybody i know in general purple belts no less than brown belts so it's very important for each of you to go am i building internal skill am i going to bed a little wiser than i was the day before you know that's why i built the four-month program is because some of you are going to be satisfied after this two-hour call and you're going to go i already know enough and some of you are going to realize wow, how much skill does it take for me to become a blue belt or a purple belt or whatever belt your goal is? Hopefully, you're not satisfied to just stay a white belt the rest of your life. I think anybody, I think every human in the world can rise up. And you've seen that over history where incomes and net worth has risen over time. It is. If you go back to the 1800s, there was less wealth in the world in fact the wealth a king wasn't that wealthy they died of pneumonia you know so okay amir Baghdadi in cairo egypt welcome to the group my friend um okay so who has the skill to help me come up with case study three who's got the skill what did i say is the first thing you must have here what's number one we're looking for what Ethically, what's the word? Ethically addictive. Boom. Good. What's number two? We need to have large what? Anybody remember? Has everybody forgotten? Large TAM. Good. Okay. So, who can think of something? Addictive. That has cam, alcohol. Now, the reason I'm not going to do alcohol is because the ethics of alcohol are somewhat bad. So I, for example, don't do anything with alcohol, except I used to be in the nightclub business, but I never made a penny from alcohol. Um, I, I let the club, the restaurant owner make the money. I, I Look, if you want to do alcohol, go ahead. My dad was an alcoholic. I think in general, alcohol is not a good thing. I drink once in a while, but I can tell you, you go hard on alcohol is, is, is the killer of many hopes and dreams. So ethically, I'm not a big fan. Let's not do alcohol. I'm not going to teach somebody. You can, you can figure that out on your own if you really love alcohol. If you think alcohol is ethically addictive, what's something that's more ethically addictive than alcohol, guys? What do we got here? Shoes. So what's my addiction factor on shoes? Well, for some people, it's very high. 
But how many people are addicted to shoes? Eh, I mean, you got a point there. I give that a seven out of ten. But let's get something good, man. Let's get like an eight, a nine. Where do we go? Fragrance, perfume. Uh, is that a nine of addiction to a large group of people? Uh, water. Okay, but what's in the total addressable market? What's our total addressable sales of water? I like that you brought that up, at least. I've been waiting for somebody to bring up water, water and oxygen, but can we make any money off of it? If I put in total water sales, assuming you're talking about bottled water, uh, this is 2012. It was, how the hell is Google? is only 1128. Global bottled water. I almost bought a bottled water company recently, about six months ago. Okay, not bad. Three hundred billion dollars. Three hundred billion dollars. Okay, large TAM. I mean, everybody agrees with me. Three hundred, three hundred and seven billion isn't bad. Water's pretty addictive. The only downside of it, it's relatively, you know, it's relatively saturated, but that doesn't scare me. I'm not a scare. That's called red oceans. I'm not afraid to swim in red oceans. Leo Steven, welcome to the group. Imar Dimi in Eastley, Hampshire, Great Britain. Welcome to the group. John Davis in Leon Mass, Miss, sorry, Leo Minster, Massachusetts. Welcome to the group. Abdel Kareem Mali in Clichy, France. Welcome to the group. Where is Clichy Soy Boo in Ile de France? Is that in Ile de France? Isn't that Paris? Music. Now, music's an Okay, let's take a poll right here. Bottled water. Music. Let's get a third one. I need something else. And then we're going to use that for our. Cryptocurrency. Is cryptocurrency addictive to a large part of the world? Drugs. It's not ethical. Unless you're talking about pharmaceutical, which I don't recommend you start out with because it's very it's a lot of barriers to entry. But vegetarian food. Why didn't you just say food? <laughs> vegetarian is like one percent of the food market. Yeah, food. I'm in the food business. I'm in the fashion business, food business, education business. All the industries I'm in, mentorbox, tylopez.com, my education brands, the food, the, the education business is a $5 trillion business. Farmer's Cart, my company, is in the food business, which is a $5 trillion business. Dress Barn is in a fashion world, which is about a trillion plus. So for me, you got, I'm like, I'm hitting the big pan stuff. How many people wear clothes? Everybody. How many people spend money? Trillion. You know, and I, we expand from there. We're in, and I'm in real estate too. I put a portion of my investments in real estate, which is also addictive. I mean, a place to live is pretty addictive, right? And the total addressable market is everybody. Everybody. Now, if you're homeless, you don't have a home, but homeless people seek shelter. So even if people without homes want homes. Okay, coffee. All right, let's do a poll right now. I, I Coffee is pretty addictive. We got coffee. What was the other one I said? So many people are coming up here. We had coffee. Let me scroll up. Was it water? Uh, well, water we did already as case study too. Sorry, my free screen now froze. We've now jammed. All right, hold on. The chats aren't showing for me anymore. <laughs> All right, give me a second, guys. Did I freeze, Josh, or can you still see me? No, we can see you, your video. All right, well, I'm going to have to wait. For oh, wait, screen. never mind. You, you are frozen now. <laughs> Here, boot me off. Uns we jam the okay. Now, there now it's back. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. 
So who, who can remind me? We got coffee, music, thank you. That's the second one, which is the best one. And there was one more. Coffee, music, water. Oh, maybe you're right. Did I not do water as a business? Which one should I do? Coffee, music, water. Coffee, music, water. Put in your votes in the chat. One of those. Do you like coffee? Do you like music? Do you like water? I'm going to do that as a third case study. Nobody's saying anything. Wait, make this thing get I'm closed. I'm saying a lot of coffee and, and music right now. Are there two? Coffee and music. All right, we're going coffee. Yeah, nobody's saying water, which is strange. You guys don't think water is addictive? You guys know who Jaden Smith is? Jaden Smith is Will Smith's son. Um, I actually know him now. <laughs> Believe it or not, he follows my YouTube videos. Jaden Smith, water company. How much money do you think he made from this thing? Just He owns just water. Last year, it hit a $100 million valuation. So I'm surprised you guys didn't pay water. Jaden Smith. They doubled their business last year, it says. I don't know why it doesn't have Jaden Smith. Pay. So this spot, if you guys have seen this water, he's doing pretty well. Pretty well here with his water company. It doesn't hurt when your dad is Will Smith, but he's still a really smart kid. I don't know him super well, but we, we text every once in a while. And uh, I met him at a complex con. Ha-ha, his dad was drinking just water on carpool karaoke with James Corden. That was pretty good. Good marketing. Here's Jaden, for those you don't know. So that's cool. He donated to water to Flint, Michigan, which struggles with their water quality. So pretty cool. There, there you go. He's about 20 years old. I don't know how old he is. Maybe he's a little older, but $100 million company. I don't know what percentage of it he owns, but his net worth, you know, he's probably a black belt already. All right. Welcome to the group. Philip Vanus is about to join me in the four-month program. Ryan Bulger, Charlottetown, Canada. Oh, you're in Prince Edward Island. That's a cool place, man. So welcome, Ryan Bulger from Canada. We've got Canada, New Zealand, America, Great Britain, France, Egypt, Chile. Oh, no, that's for a different program of mine. What else do we got? Stockholm, I already said. It's cool. I like seeing all the different countries. Okay. So did we decide here? Water. Nobody liked. I'm going to flip a coin. I'm going to flip a damn coin. I don't even have a coin. Does anybody have a coin anymore in the modern world? Flip a coin doesn't work. It. I'm going to flip this thing right here. This is my hand strengthened thing. Okay. You do jujitsu. You want to have strong hands. If you ever get in a fight with somebody, if you got weak hands, first of all, you'll break your own fingers when you punch somebody. Second of all, you won't have any grip strength. If I flip it and it shows the logo, we're going to go with coffee. And what was the other one? Coffee, water, and uh, music. Music. Music will be of this one. All right. I'm going to flip it here. Shit, this thing's heavy. I'm going to do this one here. This is a glass this is alcohol cleaner. If the logo's up, we go in with music. Nope. So we are going with... Uh, why am I having a brain freeze? We're oh. going with... Uh, coffee. Coffee's a better idea too, by the way. Water, I would have done water. The problem with the damn music business is it's addictive but it's a biatch because it's controlled by, you know, Spotify and like, it's, yeah, the distribution models a pain in the butt. So let me change here. Well, you guys must be liking this talk because we still have 583 people on here from like 630 to start at six. Uh, yeah. And it's been an hour and 20 minutes. So cool. So we're going to go with, Coffee. I love coffee. I can't believe I don't even drink coffee, but I love the idea of people starting coffee. We're going to do our research, Google research. Oh, man, change the damn font. 
here. I'll fix the phone by going like that. Loss. I'm going to go. Damn you. Google research on coffee. Let's go. Let us go. Here, we're going to put in coffee sales. Global. Does anybody spend money on coffee? Two billion cups of coffee are consumed every day. 90% of coffee production is in a few places, but people drink it everywhere. It's insane. 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 Let's see what our total sales are. There's a lot of idiotic websites. So let's go to the news tab. Sometimes I'll see more. You got to know how to do your research. Now, Starbucks is getting hurt because they have stores, but damn it, how much, how come they don't have total coffee? Sometimes Google is idiotic. Who can help me find this? Total. There's 19 billion of exports, but that's not the retail value. There we go. U.S. alone is 74 billion. So let's just call this thing. Let's just call it 100 billion. Okay, 100 billion dollars. That's a nice size market. And then what did it say? Like 2.5 billion cups a day people drink. I don't even understand how that math makes sense. That means basically everybody's drinking coffee. Look at this. This is an insane stat. <laughs> 2.2 billion. There's only 8 billion people. It means one out of four people drink coffee every day. That's pretty good. Now. Uh, with this, what's the next thing we have to do? I'm testing you. I need to get some of you guys off the white belt level. By the way, those of you getting in the program here, you got 23 more minutes to make your decision. You're getting, I'm throwing in for free that two weeks of free text marketing. Um, but what I was going to say also, you'll see there's an application after you get in the program, um, for some specialized coaching, fill that out. And my team will call you if you're a good fit. Okay. Leonard Blaylock, welcome to the group. Four month certification program, ecom certification from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Decima Sam did not put your location. I, I do not know where you are, where you're from, De Decima. Um, okay. What's the next thing we have to do? I need people helping me here. Google research, we did that. What else? Oops. I somehow, act, okay. I stopped the recording for a millisecond. Yes, FPL. Thank you. Somebody thought of it. Guys, we got to do our FPL here, man. Focus product launch. Coffee's too wide. So, how do I figure out my FPL? I go here, I type in buy coffee. Remember, you want to use an intent verb. Buy coffee. All right. You go here to Google Shopping. Buy coffee. What's the first thing that pops up? Okay, Dunkin' Donuts. You're not going to be able to necessarily sell Dunkin' Donuts. Whole bean coffee. Public goods. Let's just click here. See what this is. Anybody ever shopped here? We got any public goods fans? Is Public Goods a well-known brand? I can't even, I don't even know. I'm so far out of that consumer loop. I should know, but. Okay, Public Goods, here we go. Oof, this is a rough website, boy. Kind of a good name, but look at this little font. This is just bad marketing. There's something in the human brain called the availability bias. If it's not easy to read, people move on. They're losing so many customers. They have 46 reviews. I mean, this is okay. 
if you want to see a good sales page, go to Amazon, Jeff Bezos knows. So this is a very, look, it doesn't pop up when I click. It doesn't have other views. Pretty bad. So you guys could totally just, those of you going through my four month program, I will show you how to destroy this website. Now, I'm going to give you a little tool. It's called uh, Built With. Let's type in and see what kind of software they're using on Built With. Boom. Public Goods. Let's see what they're using. They are using. Da, 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 da. Shopify. That's good. They're Shopify Plus. That's good. That probably means they're making decent money. That's good to know. Uh -oh. Using Cloudflare. Their payment checkout Stripe. They're using Facebook. They probably have the Facebook pixel here. They're running some Facebook ads. You can go on Facebook and you can see they're using double click. They're using some remarketing stuff. So they're not dumb, but they're also not that smart either. So just so you know, like they would, this website, I would not let, I would not give them a four month certification with this website. Ten, it didn't have a pop-up that tried to get me on the email list. It has no video. It has no extra imagery. This is good that they have this. Um, it has no incentive to buy now with a timer. It has no pricing options, which is a mistake. What if I want more than 12 ounces? It doesn't have, let's see something. Yeah. What if I want a different thing? What if I want a, you know, a two pound pack? So if you look at Amazon, it's much better. It's using Shopify. I don't even like this Shopify theme that much, but it's not. That's not the the worst part of it. Let's see who they are. But you guys, this is you guys compete with this. This is their about us page. Doesn't have a human face. I think that's a big mistake. There's one teeny human face. It doesn't show who the owners are. I think that's a huge mistake. You know, on my farmer's cart business, you can see right here on farmer's cart, guess what? I'm not hiding. The days of fa nameless, faceless businesses are dying out. Kendall, uh, Kylie Jenner has her name on her brand and it made her a billionaire. So you can see here, this is a video about farmer's cart. This is my farm right here. This has a branding video so people understand, wow, this is a real actual business. You know? And that adds value to the brand. Anyway, so they're just an example. I don't like faceless businesses. I just hate them. Okay. So there's just so many ways you could compete with this coffee site. And I think they're making money. That's good news for you. If ding dong websites are making money, then imagine if you had a well put together business plan. What about niche products? That is a niche product. Coffee's not that big. It's a hundred billion market. It's not that big. Don't go too niche. I mean, why don't you sell, you know, Champagne flavored lollipops. That's niche. And the total market that wants that is like 73 people. So your maximum sales are like 10 grand a year. <laughs> they repeat buyers. All right. Welcome to the group. Damien Vela from Brooklyn, New York. My dad's from New York. He's from Harlem. He was born there. Spanish Harlem. I think one, 130 in Lexington or 160 in Lexington. Klaus Saul Grises. From Toronto, Canada. I love Toronto. Great city. Tylopez.com slash start. What questions do we have? Right here. Let me put some stuff in on, by the way, what you're going to learn in the four-month program. It's important. Um, what will you learn during the four months? I have a slide somewhere. I got to find where it is, but we're going to go through month one is a 30 day challenge. I want you to go 
into immersion for 30 days. You're going to learn from me and my business partner, Rudy. We have the 30 days ready to go. You're going to be in there month two. We're going to go deep. And, and by the way, month two, we're really focused on the first P, which is product and we'll, during the, the, the 30 day challenge. Then the second month, we're going to go into the financial aspects, the legal aspects of forming a business, selling um, the accounting side. You got to know that stuff. Month three, we're going to go into the promotions and marketing side. And then month four, we're going to make sure you understand the website. You're not going to have to become a computer programmer, but you need to learn website. You need to understand some things about design. You need to understand APIs. You need to understand plugins, you know, the software. We're going to make that easy for you. So even if you're a beginner, then at the end, there is an online exam. Okay. If you fail, you have to wait one week to take again. I have had people fail, like my social media marketing agency. I've seen people fail at 10 times. It doesn't matter. Just got to wait a week and then you go again. Okay. Um, welcome Diego Chavez from Antioch, Tennessee. Where is Antioch, Tennessee? Ty, what are some high ticket e com niches? I don't recommend you start with high ticket, man. Not a big high ticket. I think it's a big mistake people do. High ticket means high price. You do know right now, in the times we live in right now, like probably not the best thing to do is sell stuff that's super expensive because a lot of people don't have a job right now. <laughs> You're going to get the depression levels, you know? So I just, high ticket stuff is done later. It's additive revenue, you know? Meaning, you you up you upsell people later into more high ticket things. It's possible to start ecom when you have one to five thousand dollars. You can start ecom thousand bucks easy. You can start into ecom. You can do drop shipping. You can also do electronic products. We'll be talking about electronic products. You don't even have to sell a physical product. You know, Ty, what's your opinion about Dan Locke? You know, I've heard of him. I don't know anything about him, so I can't tell you. A lot of people ask me questions like that. I'm like, man, I'm so focused on my own stuff. Like, I don't even know who else is doing. I know the basics, you know, of other social media business influencers. I know Gary Vee and Grant Cardone. And we were all on a speaking tour in November in London and Dubai and stuff. But I couldn't tell you much what Grant or Gary or Dan Lockson was asked about Dan Pena. Dude, I care most. I focus on my own shit. <laughs> like, dude, when you're really in business, you're not really, even like Jeff Bezos says, he's like, he's never been competitor focused. He never is like looking around. Like, ah, ah. I look around for research, but, you know, my mentors that I look up to are people, you know, Warren Buffett. I read a lot. Um, I'm lucky enough to have access to really successful people. You know, I know five billionaires. Um, we're not best friends, but I, I, you know, I can text and email them and ask questions. Uh, um, all except the richest one. I do. He, I can't text him. He, he won't give out his phone number. Steve Ballmer. <laughs> He's number seven, the richest man in the world. But I, have, I can even, I have his email. <laughs> and so for me, you know, the people that I'm already at a black belt level. So I'm not looking to learn from other black belts. I'm even maybe coral belts. I, I'm trying to learn from like red belt people. There's not many red belts in the world. So in terms of like who I listen to and, you know, I don't know anything about Dan Locke. I don't know if he's a black belt or whatever, but if you've heard my Ted TEDx talk, I did one about, you know, the law of 33%. You spend some of your time with people, 33% of your time with people, who are, who are below you in the financial belt, you know? You spend 33% of time with people on your level. Me and my business partner, Alex, we're about the same level of business. But then you got to spend 33% of your time with people at a next level. And the more advanced you become, the harder it is to get the people. For you guys, it's going to be, you know, like I said, the people teaching myself and my program, 
like we've done me and my business partner alex alone have done in the billions in online e-com sales so we can teach you everything you need to know right now one day maybe you're going to pass us up one day maybe you guys will be my mentor it's happened before Lancaster, is this your real name this is lancelot buckner lancelot that is a interesting name man in Obachoki, Ontario, Canada. I think that's how you pronounce it. How do you keep going when you feel down? Shadi says. For most of you, you need to change your social circle. You're spending too much time with people on your level. You got to spend at least 33% of your week. Okay, that's a lot. It's like 10, 20, 30 hours with people who are doing better than you. So if you're a depressed person, Look, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to give you the answer. Some people need medication. Everybody who's depressed probably should talk to a therapist. But I will tell you one thing I know for sure. If you're depressed and you hang around only with depressed people, it's going to get worse. So if you're in a depressed, if you're prone to depression, if you give up easy, you have to hang out with people who don't because some of depression is genetic. So you got to just look. You may have the genes that you're more inclined to be depressed or give up or blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll be hanging out with 100% of people who are depressed too. Change your social circle, change your life. Part of the reason I'm doing this four-month certification over the next four months, virtually through the internet, I'm going to change your social circle. You're going to be spending hours over the next four months with people who are at the black belt level. You know, One of the teachers is a brown belt, but nobody's teaching who's under a brown belt. Are we going to work on any specific example? Yes. So when you're in the program, we're actually going to, you're actually going to build a score. I hope, I mean, you don't have to, we can't come through the internet, but that's the whole goal of this. Ty on your farmer's cart business. Why was the website farmer's cart? The video is farmer's box. We just changed the name. We were finally able to buy farmer's cart.com. Ty, what do you think about Sam ovens? I know Sam very well. But uh, I, I kind of endorsed him back in, not endorsed him, but whatever you want to call it, back in 2016 when he really started to grow. No, I haven't. I don't know where he is now. I think he moved somewhere. But like I said, I'm so focused on my own stuff. You got to take care of your own, man. Focus on your, keep your blinders on. Focus, 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 focus. How much money do you need to start? You can be an e-com for under a thousand bucks for sure. I mean, some people do it with less. What about involving e-com into real estate? Absolutely. Look at Zillow. Zillow's an e-com biz, you know? When does the third day, 30 day challenge start? For those of you who get in here, you got eight more minutes. Um, it's about to start. It starts today, my friend. <laughs> it starts today. It's the best program that I know that no one else in the world has a program like this. I guarantee you that. No university. Me and my business partners have done more e-commerce than every college professor and high school pro teacher in the entire world combined together. I'm not saying that to be cocky. I'm just saying that it's, it's just a fact, man. Okay? We've been in the trenches. I started in e-com in 01. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go here. I'm going to leave this. For those of you get in here in the next seven minutes, you go right here. Um, I am going to leave this up and for people ready to start. You can go to tylopez.com slash start. And um, I'm going to just leave my screen up, but I'm going to go. So I gave you three examples. Some of you are going to be able to do 20% of you can do it on your own. The other 80% of you, you should consider getting in this program. Tyler, 